The year was 1964, and like every other year, the Oscars are contentious. There were a number of great movies in 1964 and even in the 60s in general. In fact, 1964 was the first year they initiated the best makeup category, and it was the 14th time Bob Hope hosted the Oscars. This is the night wars and politics are forgotten, and we find out who we really hate. <laughs> More than two films had received over 10 nominations, the films being My Fair Lady, Beckett, and Mary Poppins. So what's my issue with the 1964 Oscars? It was this. The best picture of the year is My Fair Lady, Beck and Warner. My Fair Lady is adapted from the 1956 Lerner and Lowe stage musical based on George Bernard Shaw's 1913 stage play with a screenplay by Alan J. Lerner and directed by George Couture. The film is about poor cockney flower seller named Eliza Doolittle who overhears an arrogant phonics professor, Henry Higgins, as he casually wagers that he could teach her to speak proper English thereby making her presentable in high society. The film stars Audrey Hepburn as Eliza Doolittle and Rex Harrison as Henry Higgins. The critical and commercial success it became the second highest grossing film of 1964 and won eight Academy Awards including Best Picture, Best Actor, and Best Director. In 1998, the American Film Institute named it the 91st greatest American film of all time and in 2006 it was ranked 8th in AFI's Greatest Movie Musicals list. In 2018, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Essentially, my issue with My Fair Lady is when it comes to the Best Picture win, the Director win, and the Actor win. It just feels like, once again, the Oscars missed out on another opportunity to award something truly historic and deserving. Yes, Dr. Strangelove is one of Stanley Kubrick's most impressive and creative films. Prior to Strangelove, he only directed a small handful of movies. The film is about a, a hilarious end to the world that's filled with smart and humorous writing that acts as an impressive commentary on our world. The film is different, better different. Original stories meant for film typically are more interesting and dynamic and the same can be said for My Fair Lady and Dr. Strangelove. You feel like you're watching a play when you're watching My Fair Lady. Everything seems so staged and blocked. With Kubrick, every shot told an inner truth. The framing and production design of most scenes help the idea for each character's purpose. Like this low angle shot of General Jack D. Ripper with his suggestive cigar. All of our precious bodily fluids. So much of the magic behind Strangelove is through Kubrick's creativity and visual telling of the story. Peter Stellars was robbed, and I don't know, it seems perfectly obvious at this point that he deserved to win over Rex Harrison. It's funny seeing Rex Harrison win for My Fair Lady and not Audrey Hepburn, but honestly, why did he win? I'm not trying to throw shade at his performance, but when you're up against Peter Sellers, who played Mandrake, the President, and Dr. Strangelove, it's a no-brainer. Stellars for the win. Oh, and also, doesn't Rex Harrison come off as kind of a creep in My Fair Lady? His whole introduction to Hepburn is a bet on whether he can fix her speech, which seems just like a lazy way to start the story. The discovery of the drama and the characters in Strangelove unfold as the film progresses, which is more interesting than laying all your cards out in the very beginning. My Fair Lady isn't as rewatchable as Strangelove because the story is told on its face. Strangelove's shots, blocking, camera angles, and performances almost require multiple viewings to appreciate the nuance and suggestive themes in the movie. All in all, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, is a far superior film than My Fair Lady. But alas, My Fair Lady wins Oscar night and Dr. Strangelove is left out in the cold. Fair Lady is a very safe, academy-friendly film based on the award's previous winners, and Dr. Strangelove was perhaps too ahead of its time. That can be said about a lot of more Best Picture winners, and I hope to be talking about them very soon.
thank you for watching this is a lawless films youtube video if you like more of this content please click the subscribe button and i'll see you next time thank you